So I've decided that in keeping continuity with previous videos, we're gonna start off each new video with an excerpt from this. Page one going into page two, she's talking about this cat, Buttercup. He hates me, or at least distrusts me. Even though it was years ago, I think he still remembers how I tried to drown him in a bucket when Prim brought him home. It turned out okay. My mother got rid of the vermin and he's a born mouser. Even catches the occasional rat. Sometimes when I clean a kill, I feed Buttercup the entrails. He has stopped hissing at me. Entrails, no hissing. This is the closest we will ever come to love. Aw, isn't that nice? We start off our book about children murdering children with the kind of love between an angsty teenage girl and her cat. I'm gonna, I'm gonna like this book. So in my oceanography class, we're watching The Day After Tomorrow because it's based around, like, polar ice caps and stuff. The Day After Tomorrow is a movie that's not only notorious for sucking as a movie, but also sucking in terms of scientific accuracy. And I'm watching it in a science class. Ain't that a hoot and a half. Now, I don't know much about science, but I can definitely tell you that The Day After Tomorrow does indeed suck. This just happens to be one of my least favorite of Roland Emmerich's movies. Since like the mid 90s, Roland Emmerich has been making the exact same movie over and over and over and over again. They all depict his vision of so-called normal everyday people surviving disaster situations. We use the term everyday people pretty loosely here because Roland Emmerich tends to just take stereotypes from society and toss them into his movies so that we don't have to spend any time getting to know the characters. So now that we don't have any pesky character development, we could spend more time with the other thousand characters that are all gonna die anyways. They all start off the same too. Cue up the wacky divorced scientist who's already figured out everything that's wrong with the world before the national government, i.e. Dennis Quaid, i.e. Jeff um, Goldblum, i.e. Matthew Broderick, that miser Madison, i.e. John Cusack. And you can tell Roland's just getting lazier and lazier with these disaster movies. John Cusack wasn't even a scientist in 2012, he was a science fiction writer, and somehow he and the hippie Woody Harrelson figured out exactly what was wrong with the earth before the national government did, whatever. A big thing pertaining to just the day after tomorrow, I hate that we have to spend so much time on Jake Gyllenhaal and his friends. This is from a completely modern perspective, but I already know know Jake Gyllenhaal is gonna be fine. I mean, he already survived the sands of time, going crazy in both Jarhead and Donnie Darko, his insane brother Tobey Maguire, he even survived the freaky hamster ball thing. I am fully confident that a little bad weather isn't gonna phase Jake Gyllenhaal because Jake Gyllenhaal is invincible. Well, except in Brokeback Mountain, when he was beaten to death. Hmm. I guess sometimes Roland Emmerich's broken style of movie making can work with me. I mean, I really like Independence Day. In 2012, I thought it was okay, but usually it's just... the I don't know. Bottom line, school boards, choose better movies to show in your oceanography classes. Okay, bye.